Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. He took my place, and the law was vented upon him, and God is free to, to declare me as a righteous person in his eyes. Oh, praise God. He did that. You see the emphasis on every point, and this is all about what God is doing. And God wants us to, to lift up our eyes from wherever we're at and say, God, you got this. I know how this is coming out, and I don't have to be afraid of what's happening in the world. I see that you're doing something that's, that's amazing, that you're going to take care of, of everything that comes, and one day I'm going to stand there. There's not going to be something come along the devil's going to throw at me and, oh, my God, it's all out the window because I'm, I'm so bad. God's going, to, God's going to bring us through, folks. He also justified, but this is the amazing part. Those he justified, he also glorified. This promise, this purpose of God is so sure that God absolutely declares it as having been done. Do you think there's a single thing the devil can do about something that's already done? What did he say to Abraham? I have made you a father of many nations. He didn't even have a kid. And the Lord says, I've made you a father of many nations and brought him to the place where it was physically impossible for that to happen. And God did it. That same God is our God today. Praise God. So there's the, there's the stand we have. There's the hope that we have. There's why we need to stand in our faith and trust Him with every circumstance that God brings our way because He's going to turn it around for something that is a part of making us what He wants us to be. And so if we are facing a world of unprecedented difficulties and challenges we have a God who is going to measure out the grace that you and I need to stand against that, and it's going to accomplish something that, that living in a comfortable situation won't. We've got a whole lot of brothers and sisters in the world that know what we're talking about right now. And I'll tell you, there's a God who's faithful. Of course, we need to pray for him too. So now he begins, he goes past this, all-encompassing purpose of God to bring us to a place of glory by a pathway where everything works to that end. That's God's purpose that he has absolutely declared. Now we're looking at what are the things that will apparently oppose that. What's the deal with them? Okay, what then shall we say in response to this? If God, be for us, God is for us, who can be against us? So we know there's going to be opposition. That's the, that's the name of the game. We're in a world that will oppose this. This is a pitched battle, but it is one the devil has already lost. He lost it at the cross, and all he's doing is, is playing out the string, trying to do all the damage he can. But what can he do? That's the thing. If we have really, truly given our hearts and lives to him, what can he do? We need to rise up and, and realize what, what our God, who our God is and what he's done for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him, along with him, graciously give us all things? I mean, that would make no sense for him to go to that length and say, okay, now you're on your own. Measure up and fly right and I'll accept you. This is a God who knows the depth of our need better than we do. He knows everything about what's wrong with me and why I am unfit to live in his presence. And he has made provision for every bit of it. It's not like I, he does 99, 44, 100%, and i got to fill in the last little gap. This is everything. It's all his doing that he invites us to rest in and hope in and, and, and agree with. And there are battles, there's part that we play. We fight, but it's a fight of faith, not self-effort. 
It's a fight of having, expressing confidence in the promise of God and acting like it's true. Ron. <laughs> no, he called me for using the word act, but living as if it's true. Praise God. All right, so he's going to graciously give us all things. Who will bring? Now, here's one of the issues. Here's one of the big ones. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Well, there's one who tries. <laughs> Spends a lot of time at it. But he says it is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, is also interceding. He's praying for us. Lord of mercy. But this deals with the issues of me and what's wrong with me and how I feel about it and what the devil tells me about it. He is a constant accuser of the brothers. And I'll guarantee that every one of us here that knows the Lord, we live with this reality. It's not always, in fact, often it's not the stuff that's coming from out there that opposes us. It's the stuff that happens in here. And we serve a God who wants us to get this. He knows you. He knows about you. He knew about you from the foundation of the world. Everything that you and I discover about ourselves that turns into something that's discouraging, God knew about it. And he chose us anyway because it's not based upon that. It's based upon what Jesus has provided for us, the full and complete salvation. It's Christ in us. We said recently, the hope of glory. That's the reason I have a hope of that, that day. And I'll tell you, one of the things that we're going to have to learn, and we're going to be learning it going forward in a deeper way, is we're going to have to learn how to cope with the things that we discover in ourselves where we can bring them freely before God as, as areas of need, knowing that he loves us, knowing that he's provided everything. Not coming in a, like a scalded dog, but coming in as his child. Coming freely to him, recognizing that he loves us, that he knew all about it before we, before we discovered it. I'll tell you, if we can learn how to live in that, we can be free from an awful lot of what the devil throws at us. Because there is a devil that will constantly tell you, you're not good enough, you're not this, you've done this, you've done that. Look how you failed, look, you'll never measure up, you've messed up all your life, why well, do you think things are going to be any different now? It's an endless litany of defeat that he will minister if we will listen to it instead of saying, God, you hear what the devil's saying, what are you saying? That's my hope. I'm not hoping to me to begin with. Let this thing, instead of discouraging me and leading me to a place of defeat, let this thing instead drive me to Jesus because he is my answer. That's what God's purpose is in all of this. He is allowing us to discover these things so that we can suffer, we can die to that thing, we can embrace more of his life, we can experience more of, his, more of the deliverance that he's provided for us. You see how God works things together for good, even the accusations and the lies of the enemy. He wants us to learn how to make choices about whom we're going to believe. This is operational Christianity. This is, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you and I live every single day. And, and, you know, I started out because this is about the end of the age and how God is going to fill, fulfill his work. How do you think it's going to be when the power of darkness gets deeper and deeper? Do you think maybe that God's going to use that to drive us closer and closer to him, to, to feel the sense of our need in deeper ways than perhaps we ever have? You know, we can kind of bop along in America so far. But I'll tell you what, God is going to institute the means that will bring us to maturity one way or another. And I'll tell you, he's up to the job. Paul, calls, Paul speaks of what we have in Christ as the unsearchable riches. Unsearchable. You can't plumb the depth of it. You don't get to the point and say, well, that was, that's all. It's great, but it's all there is. You never get to the end of it. 
There's always something more. Thank God. You see why Paul gave up, so, so freely gave up everything that gave him an earthly advantage? He said, that's a bunch of garbage. I want Christ. He is, my, he is the answer. The unsearchable riches that are in him are what I need, what I want. But this is one of the, this is one of the big ones. But God has made that provision, and Jesus is, is praying for you and for me at our weakest moment. We've got somebody right there at the throne who's praying for us in that, in that point of need. Lift up your heads. Didn't Jesus say that about the end of the age when you see all these things? Hang your head and hide in the cape. No, wait a minute. He said, lift up your heads. Your redemption is drawing nigh. Praise God. So now he comes to external things. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Now, these were not academic questions in that day, were they? These were things that real believers faced. But you know, we have to see even things like this, not as defeats for Christians and victories for the devil, but as victories for Christ. I, I was thinking about the, uh, the letters that Jesus wrote, uh, that Jesus spoke in, through John to the seven churches. One of them was Smyrna. And you can read about that, and I think it's in Revelation too. But Smyrna was a, evidently a place where there was a lot of persecution. And the Christians were just experiencing all kinds of, of trouble. And the Lord didn't say, I'm going to get you out of it. I'm going to make things easy. No. He said, you're going to have persecution for a certain period of time. But be, what, his, what his, his words to them were simple. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. See, God's value system is very different from ours down here. We value life in this world as though that's the thing that we, is most important. But I'll tell you, there's a, there is a victory that is won when someone absolutely stands for Christ to the point where they're giving up their life, say, I lay it down gladly. I, I, know, where, I know my life is in his hands. I know where I'm going. I know who Jesus is. And I don't care what you do to me, I'm standing for Jesus. That's a victory, not a defeat. Amen. And I believe there's going to be a, you know, we, we live in a day where there's unprecedented persecution. I mean, we look back at the persecutions of Rome, but, on, but they weren't on a scale of today. How many of you saw the news about uh, the Christians in Nigeria just two, three weeks ago? Very recent anyway. 200 Christians were suddenly slaughtered by a bunch of, bunch of people. Was that a defeat? Where do you think they are? You think they're, they're boo-hooing and say, oh God, I had plans. Why did you do that to me? I want to go back. <laughs> My God, that's one-way ticket to glory. And not only that, there is a crown, there is a value that God places upon a life that absolutely is willing to say, I am with Jesus, come hell or high water, my, if, well, if it means my life, I'm with Jesus. That is a victory of the highest order. And I believe that we're going to see an unprecedented uh, example of that in the last hour of, church, of earth's history. God is going to take a lot of his children home, and they're going to have the opportunity, not by their own strength, they're going to have the opportunity to stand in all, against all of these kinds of things. You know, I, my mind goes back to something I've referred to before, but is in the life of Corey Ten Boom, who, you know, lived through the Nazi invasion of Holland and then was in prison in such desperate conditions for so long. But as they were coming into some of these issues, she was, I, I guess she was expressing to her father, you know, how can we do this? How is, it, how is this going to be possible? I don't, I don't, I'm not that strong. And he used an illustration. He was, a, he was a watchmaker, and he would travel periodically to the national, whatever it was, that had the official time and synchronize his watch with that so he could take it back and synchronize everything else. And so they would make 
We didn't have the internet in those days. So they would make this journey every once in a while by train, and he would take her along. And he, re he reminded her of a time when she was a little girl, and he, she would accompany him. And he asked her a simple question. When, when we traveled, when we made those train trips, when did I give you the ticket? Very simple answer. When we were about to get on the train. You didn't need it before then. And the, the illustration was obviously meant to convey the fact that when, when we need the grace to stand against the darkness of this world, God will give us the grace to do it. We don't have to sit here and say, I'm ready. I feel strong. I don't. There's nothing in me that could stand up to any of this. But I'll tell you, there is a God who will undergird his people. Whatever he has called us to go through, he will be with us in it. And we need to have that confidence that, that's, that says, I don't care. I'm going to stand, but I'm trusting God. And it's interesting to me when you look back at the heroes of faith in the Bible, in, in chapter 11 of, of Hebrews in particular, all of the categories of, of uh, triumph that God lists. Now, some of them were amazing supernatural deliverances like the Hebrew children that were thrown into the fire and didn't burn them. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. They didn't eat him. They crossed the Red Sea. I mean, great miracles that God can do if that's what's appropriate for his purpose in that, in that occasion. But it is very interesting to me that he continues right on with others who didn't accept deliverance, but they laid down their lives, and it says the world was not worthy of them. God's value system is very different. For some, God may have a purpose to do something spectacular that will be a testimony to the world, will fulfill his purpose in a particular way. For others, it may be, that's your ticket to home. But God is going to give the grace you know, I was thinking about some of the promises of God about the, uh, about the gospel. He said, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness, and then the end will come. And I believe with all my heart that God is going to fulfill the words of Jesus when he said, all that the Father gives me will come to me. Every single one that he's been talking about in Romans that he foreknew, everyone's going to come. Well, that tells me that God is going to do whatever it takes in the face of the enemy to reach those. He's going to breach the gates of hell, as Jesus said. He's going to reach into them. Satan will not be able to hold them as victims that God has purposed to save. And I can see that there, there may well be the greatest harvest that the church has ever seen. It's, it's happening in some areas of the world, in remote areas, where the gospel is, is making great inroads and there are great numbers that are coming to Christ. I'll tell you, what, it, what, it, what I see basically is that God is going to get every single one and he's going to do whatever it takes to make that happen. You know, I don't know exactly how to interpret this, but some of you will remember Brother Thomas telling about an experience one time that he had. I don't know if, he was, if it was a vision or a dream, but whatever it was, he was carried in the Spirit to some remote part of the world, and, st and he found himself standing before a vast throng of people. And he was preaching to them in their language. And he did that for a little while, and then he was picked up and carried to another area, and the same thing happened. He began to, sp to speak to great numbers of people in their language, and that happened in several cases. I'll tell you, I don't know how whether literally something like that's going to happen, but God can do whatever he wants to do. The same God that carried Stephen around, picked him up and sent him in another place, and he, he was there preaching the gospel. He can do whatever he wants to do. Where miraculous power is called for, he can do anything. Where faithfulness unto death is called for, he can give the grace to do that. In either case, he is equally honored. And we will equally stand before him on that day. God just calls for his people to have a heart that says, Lord, I'm with you, come hell or high water. Because I know your purpose and I know that no matter what happens, you're going to turn it around for my eternal good. And so I'm, I'm 
absolutely on board with that. Praise God. As it is written, verse 36, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. That sounds encouraging. But if you're thinking by earthly terms, in th earthly terms, that doesn't sound very good. But if you're thinking, if your value system has changed to where you see, I get it that this world and, and my life here is worth nothing in eternal terms. I need it to go away. I need whatever means you institute for it to go away because I want what you have given me that is eternal. So this is, this is what, uh, what that's about. And then he says, no, in all these things, and it sure doesn't say in spite of, does it? In all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us, not through our strength or anything that we could muster, because I haven't got it, do you? For I am convinced. And Paul lived out that conviction, didn't he? He lived it out until... Caesar took his life eventually. And, and all the other apostles except John laid down their lives for Jesus. They, they lived out the conviction that God placed in their hearts. That it's not about life here. It's about what God has called us to. It's another kingdom. We have left our allegiance to Caesar and all the world around us. We have transferred that allegiance to Jesus Christ. End of story. Convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. So if he, anything you didn't think of, he just takes it all in. None of it will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So yes, the world will get dark. Yes, we will see the the culmination of Satan's efforts to enslave people that, that, cho that choose his way. But in the very midst of that, it is not a time where God's going to sneak us out of there and, and just retire in defeat and let Satan have the, the masses. God purposed from the beginning in this very kind of a world to call forth a family to do something for us we could never do. We rest not upon our ability but upon the promise of, of God who cannot lie. He's purposed to bring everyone through. The smallest child that puts their trust in him has nothing to fear from any of these things right here. This is not about being strong or smart. Thank God. That would leave all of us out, wouldn't it? But I'll tell you, we've got a God who's faithful. And I believe with all my heart this morning, he wants us to face this time not with fear, not with, oh my God, it looks bad, this and that and the other, but God help us to be your people in this hour. God could anoint somebody here to go out and preach with great power and, and see a great harvest. I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. We're going we're gonna to have to follow the lamb wherever he goes. We don't have a program here. This is, this is Jesus Christ is the head. But as we look to him, we need to have that confidence that whatever lies before us, he will take it, he will use it, and he will bring us through, and one day we will stand there, and every single one he has ever foreknown will be standing there with us, and victory will be his completely, and all of this will be done. And to him will be all of the glory forever and ever. This is his heart, his purpose. So I would just pray that I know that I sense the Lord wanted to encourage every one of his children. Don't look at the world you live in and be afraid. Look at Jesus. Lift up your hearts. Look to him. Know that his purpose is, will absolutely be, be fulfilled. It's the one that will triumph. Yes, I don't care what Satan is allowed to do. God's purpose is on track. He is on the throne. It will happen, and he will get the glory. Praise God. This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. While it is not required, a donation of $10 for DVDs and $5 for CDs is suggested to help with expenses. Also, for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your requests to Midnight Cry Ministries, 
Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time. And may God richly bless you until then.